After a shocking defeat at the Battle of Yavin and the destruction of their feared technological terror known as the Death Star, the Emperor was absolutely enraged. Although his apprentice Darth Vader had served him loyally for years since Order 66, he had now failed him and must pay the price for his failure. As part of his punishment, he was sent back to his pain-ridden homeworld of Tatooine to confront Jabba the Hutt, and once there he remembers his past and the pure pain and suffering that he endured. Because of this, he lashes out with fury and slaughters yet another tribe of Tusken Raiders just as he did many years prior, creating another religion among the Sand People devoted to him. So make sure you subscribe and let's break the story down. The story begins beneath the scorching twin suns of Tatooine in the area surrounding Jabba the Hutt's palace. As the doors rise open and the harsh sunlight pours into the hallways, a single shadowy figure parts the light. Darth Vader immediately walks forward and into the palace, but is confronted by two of Jabba's loyal Gamorrean guards. Instead of taking the time to protest or try to deceive his way through, Vader does what he does best and immediately ignites his red blade before slicing the heads of the Gamorreans off. Without even a moment of hesitation, Vader continues walking forward, and this time he is confronted by Bib Fortuna, Jabba's major domo. Bib tries to communicate with Vader in Hatiz, but Vader sternly tells him, I will speak with the hut. Bib attempts his usual slimy act trying to dodge the question, but Vader isn't having any of it this time, immediately reigniting his crimson blade, this time with a threat. Bib Fortuna then rushes over to the sleeping Jabba and frantically tries to awaken the huge slug and tells his boss that Vader has butchered two of the guards. Jabba is not happy whatsoever with this little arrangement, telling Vader, You arrive a day early, kill two of my guards and expect me to deal with you? Vader stays silent and is careful not to step over Jabba's trapdoor. He has gathered a pretty large audience of scum and villainy behind him, including everyone from Dengar to Boba Fett. Jabba then asks the Dark Lord what he can do for the Empire, but Vader refuses to speak. He wants Jabba to dismiss the crowd of disgusting onlookers immediately. With the wave of a hand, Jabba sends the assortment of bounty hunters and scoundrels out of the main room before turning his head back to Vader. Jabba then turns his head, asking Vader what he can do now. Vader, however, says, Not for the Empire. For me. He then says he will return tomorrow in an official capacity, but today he is here for personal reasons and will not leave until he is satisfied. Jabba then shows disgust and warns Vader to not even think about trying a mind trick on him because they will not work on a great hut. This angers Vader and he tells Jabba that he was not trying a mind trick. That is not the way of the Sith. Vader then warns Jabba that the Jedi have been gone for a long time, and the reason for that is standing right before him. Vader continues to show that he is the one in charge here by confidently standing onto the trap door, leading Jabba to jab back. The Hutt crime lord tells Vader that he is here alone, in secret. If he were to send him down the trap door to the rancor below, nobody would notice. Immediately after this, Jabba waves his arm and sends the hooligans from the palace to surround Vader, but he makes one crucial mistake. He refers to Darth Vader as a Jedi, which as you can guess, does not please him whatsoever. The Dark Lord ignites his red blade in anger, and immediately blocks every blaster bolt that comes at him, before completely decimating a Jawa and his nearby scoundrel friend. More and more scoundrels throw themselves at Vader, but he manages to dispatch every single one of them, killing them with swift strikes of the blade. After this, Vader begins angrily force choking Jabba for calling him a Jedi, before finally asking him if he understands that the Sith do not use mind tricks. They prefer to use sheer force. Now after this, Vader visits Boba Fett and a very interesting Wookiee named Black Chrysanthemum to inquire about the bounty placed on Han Solo's head by Jabba. Boba Fett is obviously on the hunt for Han, while Black Chrysanthemum is sent to hunt down Silo, an agent of Emperor Palpatine who augments many subjects, hoping to find a replacement for Darth Vader should he die. Now the reason I'm pointing out Black Chrysanthemum here is that he has the potential to show up in the book of Boba Fett due to his deep ties with Boba, so make sure you keep an eye out for him in the show. Following this, Vader warns the two bounty hunters that they must complete their separate missions in a timely manner and that they should get to work immediately. If they can't follow these guidelines, well, you know what will happen to them. The Dark Lord does not tolerate failure and will punish anyone who cannot fulfill his orders. Right after, Vader needs to let off some steam because of the disrespect shown to him by Jabba and decides to do the same thing he did all of those years ago as Anakin Skywalker. He travels down to a nearby Tusken Raider village and immediately ignites his red blade, before going on a spree of death and destruction, cutting down every single Tusken he sees. Vader leaves a trail of black death wherever he walks, and even goes as far as to burn down the entire village. The anger at the loss of his mother still sticks with him to this day, even as Darth Vader. It is something he can never forgive the Sand People for and will remember every time he steps back on the sands of Tatooine. In total, Vader slaughters tens if not hundreds of Tuskens, not leaving a single one alive. Or, so he thought. One Tuscan raider from the village happens to be perched up on a nearby hill, and witnesses the entire massacre under the twin suns. 
He is obviously horrified and immediately rushes off to a nearby clan to tell the tale. This Tuscan raider is actually telling the tale of the demon in the night returning, since this situation has happened before and actually created a religion among the Tuscan people. When Anakin committed his first slaughter back when he was still a Jedi, one raider also survived on that dark day and told the other clans of the blue-bladed demon in the night. From that day onwards, the Tuscans worshipped and feared the demon, making sacrifices to ward him off for many years. Now this Tuscan is telling the others of that demon returning, but this time with a blade of red fire. Upon reaching a nearby camp, the Tuscan places some branches down and then fires his blaster at it to ignite the pile. He then simply sits down and curls up in tears, horrified at what he had just witnessed. The slaughter of his friends and family at the hands of the night demon who the Tuscans have feared for years since the first slaughter. After seeing this young Tuscan boy in tears, the clan leader approaches him and asks what has happened. The boy tells the tale and then leads the rest of the tribe over to the other campsite. They are of course horrified and immediately screech into the skies at the sight of their many dead brothers. At this point, the entire tribe has been called into the center of the destroyed village, and they have been told to stand watch while a massive burning effigy and shrine are built to the night demon, hoping to once again ward him off. As the shaman of the Tuscan village peers into the burning flames, he sees a peaceful village. Moments later though, a massive inferno engulfs the entire town, and a shadowy figure emerges. It is the demon of the night, who we of course know is Darth Vader. The Tuscans know that this is the same night demon who slaughtered their people before the Clone Wars, but they don't know just how right they really are. Anakin and Darth Vader both continuing the legacy of the demon in the night. After this, the shaman sees the night demon summon a ball of fire and a blade of fire, before slashing through every single Tuscan present. With his eyes glowing a bright red, the night demon continues stalking and sending streams of rage in every direction. More Tuscans now gather around the fire to watch the shaman recount the events, and now he sees more clearly. He sees the mask of the night demon holding his blade of red plasma, and piercing not just the men, but the women and the children too. At this point, the Tuscans are done viewing the past and want to do something to stop the demon returning. Some of the sand people have collapsed with fear and are not capable of helping, but the ones who are begin gathering wood and other flammable objects to create a shrine. Hordes of Tuscans carry big chunks of material, combining all of it into one location. Stepping back to view their brand new effigy, the figure of Darth Vader stands tall over the village. Moments later, the raiders bow down to the demon in the night, and the shaman sets the effigy ablaze, making one final attempt to banish him into the realm he came from, obviously not realizing that he hails from the very same place as them. And if you want to see how a religion was created around Anakin's original slaughter of the Tusken Raiders from Attack of the Clones, where they worshipped and feared the demon in the night, check out the link in the pinned comment down below. It truly is a tragic tale. And Luke and his friend Biggs Darklighter also discovered the site of the Tusken Raiders slaughter by his own father Anakin, and they noticed that the bones were sliced with an ominous amount of precision, something which looked like it had been done with a lightsaber. Luke didn't yet realize that it was his own father who had committed the massacre. For many years following, a dark side virgins formed in the place where Anakin committed the massacre, and anyone who traveled there felt cold and dark. Even Biggs Darklighter, who wasn't force sensitive at all, could feel it. So that is how Darth Vader returned to Tatooine after A New Hope and slaughtered the Tusken Raiders once more. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.